Hi, it's RC Retard here. Originally, this video was going to be about the orbit feature on the Phantom and using Litchi to initiate it. Hoping that recent firmware updates from DJI and updates to Litchi might resolve the issue that I had before where it puts the point of interest off to the left. So after checking out the local RC field here at the break of day, it looked good to bring out the uh, quadcopter. So I did so and flew it over to our point of interest, this windsock in the middle of the RC field here. Once in position, I ran the orbit test. And again, it kept the windsock off to the left of the frame. Now it's not nearly as bad as it was, but this still is not acceptable in my opinion. According to Litchi, the problem lies with DJI's flight controller, not with uh, the Litchi application. If we look at my previous test, you can see that the uh, windsock is way off to the left there. So it is a, a big improvement that they've made, but it's not 100% yet, certainly, not by any stretch. So with that failure, I decided to have a look at some of the new features here in Litchi. The last update they made, when I fired it up, it came up in FPV mode here. Now, I won't be doing FPV with the uh, Phantom. If I wanted to do FPV, I'd probably buy a cheaper racing drone and uh, do that sort of thing. For those that don't know, FPV is first person view. So you fly the drone by uh, looking through the view of the camera mounted to the drone. So they've added a few things here. In orbit, they've added the ability to uh, save and load missions, which is a very nice addition to that feature. And they've also added focus and track. But these features are really targeted more at the Phantom 4, as it has hardware and software in its flight controller to accommodate that better than the Phantom 3. The 3 can do this a little bit, but it's not really useful in my opinion. However, the panorama function is, and that's what I've activated here. I flew the drone up to about 70 feet or so, and then told it to do a panorama for me. I took the defaults of horizontal eight pictures. As you can see, it's got a few more presets there, a sphere of two rows, sphere of three rows, and a custom sphere. But I chose this uh, default and uh, hit the start and it snapped off the pictures and gave me a status of each one being taken by this indicator down here in the lower left. And once it was done, I was able to take the photographs and load them into a couple of different stitching applications. One of those being Photoshop, the other being the open source and free Hugin. So Hugin is a open source photo stitching application and it will run on the Mac, Windows and Linux, FreeBSD as well. So I run a Mac here, so I downloaded the Mac version by clicking on that. Once you get to this download page, don't click on anything on this page, nothing that says to download. What you want to do is if it doesn't automatically start downloading, just click on that link underneath the green bar there. Right there, it says direct link. I right mouse clicked on that and did a save link as. And save the file that way. And Hugin comes up and looks like this. Now it gives me this error every time it comes up. A debug alert and asks me if I want to close the application I say no and it works just fine then it'll give you a little tip window we're gonna close that right now it's got this assistant mode here and that's what we're gonna to use to do this first thing we do is load some images so we're gonna do just that here I'm gonna sort these by kind and grab these and open those and this is the panorama that I shot out at the RC field. 
So we don't care about how they're arranged in this first view here. The next step we're going to go to is to align them. So let's go ahead and do that. Now this can take quite a while. Depends upon how big your images are, etc. If you're trying to do panoramas with a digital SLR and uh, you're, you know, uh, 23 megapixels or something of that nature, this is going to take quite a while. The machine that I'm running this on is an 8-core Mac Pro. So it's not a slouch, it's not a new Mac Pro, but uh, the last generation. Anyways, we'll speed this up here. Okay, it's finished and it looks like it's created a pretty nice panorama for us. It's cropped out the top area there where it's had to in order to create this seamless image. Looks beautiful. Let's tell it to create the actual output file. I'm just going to take the defaults here, say OK. Now it's going to say the project has to be saved. So I'm going to do that right now. And we're going to save it with the default name here. And then we're going to take the default output file name as well. And that will create our output. And I'll speed this up here. This can take quite a while to run. So we have the Hugen project file here, and then we have our final output file. We can spacebar on that and see that it created indeed a beautiful panorama, seamless. Looks awesome. So that's how you use Hugen to create your panorama. Now we'll move on to Photoshop. Okay, here we are in Photoshop CS6. That's the latest version I have. I wasn't willing to go past this as it does 99.9% .9 of what I would ever need and a whole lot more. So we go up to File. We go to Automate. We go down to the bottom, Photo Merge. We're going to tell it to use files, defaults to that. So just click Browse. Select all the files you want it to create a panorama from. Doesn't matter what order you're in. It's going to use image recognition to uh, figure out how to map them together. So we'll open those. We'll tell it to do a cylindrical because my panorama was just a pan creating a cylindrical image. So let's say OK. And now Photoshop is going to take quite a little while processing all of these photos. So I'm going to speed it up here until we get to the very end. See you in a second. And we're back. Okay. So here is our panorama. Let's uh, crop it and have a look at the end result. So we've selected a crop area. Go up to Edit, and say Copy Merge, Do a File New. We'll default the size to whatever is in the clipboard, as you can see here. So we'll call this Photoshop Auto Pano. We'll paste our image in, and there it is. You can see here that the navigator in Photoshop pretty far zoomed out. Let's see what 100% looks like. Okay, so we can use a navigator here to kind of scroll along our panorama and you can see tons of detail in this thing and I don't see any seams. Usually you can see that in the sky, but boy, it just blended up. Oh, there's one right there on the side of that building. Anyways, still really nice image. Looks pretty good to me. That's the only one I saw. Just the side of that building there. And everything else looks pretty clean. So here's another look at the uh, Hugen panorama that was created. You can see there's a lot of detail in that zoom up there. 
We can take a quick scan through it. Looks pretty nice. So that's a great new feature for Litchi. I hope this tutorial helped you, and if it did, please smash that like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, this is RC Retard, signing off.